How's it going ladies and gentlemen? Today I'm going to put this muzzle device on, it's a muzzle brake, using the lock nut or jam nut method. Now there's a few ways you can put muzzle devices on. Uh, crush washer is one of the most popular, you can use shims, peel washers, but today let's look at the jam nut or the lock nut method. The idea behind the lock nut method is that you torque the lock nut against the muzzle device to it's about 15 to 20 foot pounds torque in general. That force against the muzzle device is what holds the threads of the muzzle device and the threads of the barrel together. That's what's holding the muzzle device in place and keeping it on your rifle. So let's start. First thing I'll do is just kind of make sure the threads are clean. I know they are. I've already sprayed this with cleaner and wiped it down. Uh, you'll take your jam nut, your lock nut, thread it all the way onto the barrel. All the way until the lock nuts, all the way up against the barrel, as far as it can go. Do this hand tight, don't wrench it in there. Then, take your muzzle device. Thread this all the way onto the barrel, up against the jam nut, just hand tight. At this point is when you want to time your muzzle device if it requires timing. This one does. You can tell quickly if it requires timing by the fact that the bottom side has no ports, the top side does have ports. That's for different reasons. In this case, it's so that the gases leaving out the top of the barrel will help combat some muzzle rise and keep the uh, barrel steady. But this is a muzzle brake, so the ports are on the side. And you don't want the ports facing upwards and downwards or angled. It's going to cause a lot of barrel movement in that case. So this is the way the device is supposed to be orientated with the barrel. That's all timing is, is lining the device up the way it was designed to be. Device all the way on, backed off until it's timed. And then you can go ahead and unscrew this lock nut into the device. So you're unscrewing it down the threads of the barrel into the device. And this is just hand tight right now. Generally, you're going to do 15 to 20 foot-pounds of torque. If your device came with some other specification, you know, it could be 25, 26, I've seen. Use that number. I've even seen up to, I, I would, I'd say I haven't seen anything above 30 foot-pounds. So I take my torque wrench, and I use this crow's foot wrench at the uh, size of the nut lock nut. And I just set it to 19 foot-pounds. That way, with the plus or minus one variation in torque wrenches, I'll be between 18 to 20. I don't know. I've just always done it that way. You can go ahead and set it to 20 if you want. Holding the muzzle device in this correct orientation, timed, I'm going to go ahead and continue to unscrew that lock nut into the device. Did you hear that click? This is a lot easier if you can get the rifle into a vise and secured in some way. It's big enough, and I have it on a bipod, that I was able to hold it while doing this. And a lot of people maybe don't have a vise, so this is what I meant by timing. I just wanted to show, you see the barrel coming down straight, and I want these ports facing the side on this device. So this is proper timing, and you can see the ports coming out the top, <laughs> not the bottom. Now if you don't have a torque wrench, I would say go about a quarter turn. That's just in general, and if you're going that route, I'd really check that the muzzle device is still lined up after a couple magazines through it, just to make sure it's on there tight enough. But in general, <laughs> you know, after you get hand tight, about a quarter turn is when it'll click. That's 20 foot pounds. So you can get close. If you don't have a, if you don't have a torque wrench, that's what I would do, and I've done it before, in fact. Just about a quarter turn, keeps it on there tight, but just keep an eye on it while you're shooting. I hope this video could help you out. If it did, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Neckbone out.